Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, I know I haven't seen you all in a little bit, but it's so good to be here, um, just kind of chatting with you and talking with you uh, this morning and, and just sharing some of the new tips and um, the, the new things that I've kind of, uh, kind of come up with. So this is my first time doing a uh, YouTube live, so I'm just trying to um, kind of get used to it. So bear with me a little bit. But um, today I just wanted to show you my updated simple makeup routine. As you know, I recently had a daughter. Um, I, I per posted a birth and pregnancy video. It's one of the latest videos on my um, channel. So you might want to check that out just to get caught up. So she is, uh, she turned four months old actually today. So um, I'm going to be going back to work. I, have a, I do have a nine to five job. Um, and I'm going to be going back to work um, in about a week. So I'm just trying to get all my ducks in a row. So I've had a good amount of time to just kind of simplify um, a lot of my personal routines, things around the house, my cooking. I mean, I've just kind of gone through everything one step at a time to simplify as much as I could. And one of the things that I definitely needed to simplify was my daily makeup routine, which had just gotten too complicated. <laughs> Um, I don't have all that time. I have a very little amount of time. Um, and if you do follow me on social media regularly, then you'll know that I've recently also started a weight loss and a fitness journey. So I'm trying to get back to um, my ideal weight and to gain a lot of my strength and health back after giving birth because I had I had a, a bit of a tough pregnancy. So I'm kind of working on that, you know, in the morning. So I got a lot going on in the mornings. I'm getting my kids ready in the morning. Um, in addition to my four-month-old, I have a six-year-old. So I got a lot going on. I don't have a lot of time, but I still want to look presentable. I still want to look nice. And I do truly believe that you can look completely presentable even if you don't have a lot of time. Um, it's it's not difficult to um, you know, to kind of put something together that's nice and and simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of go ahead and walk you through my routine. And um, if any questions pop up, um, I'll make sure to answer the questions. You don't have to hold your questions. Um, I love um, interactive discussions and conversations. So I welcome any questions you may have. So I keep all of look at my bag. I keep all of my, um, right now, my daily makeup in this bag. So I actually had to separate my daily makeup from like my glam, my glam bag, which I have also gone over on the channel before how I have that organized and I have it right here and I'll show you. So this, this is like my bag that I use when I'm like, you know, I'm getting glammed up. I got like everything in here. This is like the, the bag. Okay. And then not just that, but I have my brushes separate too because I'm just extra and I like things to be really organized. So, I mean, I can't be digging through all that stuff. That's so unrealistic for a daily basis. So what I do is, what I did was I took out my essential items and I put them all in this, this Fenty bag, which some of you all may have seen sometimes when she runs sales on her actual on FencyBeauty.com, she gives away like little gifts. So um, I love this little bag. I thought it was so cute. I would prefer to have um, a smaller bag similar to what I just showed that's a little bit sheer for like my daily makeup. So I did actually order one. I'm trying some out, but this is this is my temporary bag for now. So um, in the morning, and I have contacts in, um, so you know, some of you all have seen my glasses. Um, some of you all actually have my exact <laughs> pair of glasses. But um, so these are my glasses right here. But um, I wanted to have a little bit of a change. I like kind of switching up my looks sometimes. So I do have contacts in. I don't probably can't see them. <laughs> I did go to the optometrist this past week to update my prescription. So I'm good to go there. And for the first time in my adult life, I'm practicing with putting in contacts every morning most mornings, you know, unless I'm just like really, really rushing. Um, because after, since wearing glasses for what, 33 years, I'm 38. So literally since I was five, um, I have like really dark, you know, like marks on my face, um, that the glasses have left down through the years. So 
Um, I'm kind of just tired of that. I'm tired of having to work so hard to kind of cover them. So, you know, I just kind of want to change my look up a little bit. So contacts, here we are. So in the morning, um, when I'm ready for makeup, you know, I, I take everything out of here and that's what I'm going to do right now. I put all my brushes. I just put everything in there. So we got one little happy family going of all of my products. So let me keep taking these out. And this is why I don't like using this bag because this alone kind of wastes a little bit of time. Um, like I said, what, what I mean, I want this to be quick. I want this to be quick. Um, with practice, you know, if you do adopt this routine, it should only take you about 10 minutes to get through. Maybe even less, you know, if you get a little bit faster. That That's the only, that's all I can devote to makeup. So um, I start off with my Makeup Forever Step 1 Primer. Um, this is one of my favorite primers. It really, so I have a kind of like an oily T-zone. So it does a really good job of kind of cutting that, that oil out. I already have all my skincare on. So, um, you know, just so you can see it a little bit, what it looks like. It's kind of lotion-y when it goes on, but then it, it turns like a little chalky as you rub it in. So I have a mirror behind the camera, so I might either be looking here to talk to you, or I might look here, or I might even look up here, because I do have a mirror, just so you know. So as I kind of rub it on, you should be able to see how it literally um, kind of takes the shine out of my skin, because I was pretty shiny um, because of like all the lotion I put on and everything I had going on in my skin. I already put on sunscreen and things like that. But you can actually see on camera how it just kind of takes that out. And I focus on my T-zone. I, I put it on my eyes, um, you know, under my eyes to kind of help my concealer stay in place. I get really, really oily around my nose. So I make sure to kind of just do a good job rubbing it into my nose. And, and I really kind of focus it, like I said, in this area because I'm not as concerned about the rest of my face. And you gotta make sure with this particular product that you do rub it in well. You can't like rely on it evaporating because it will kind of leave a bit of a chalky like streaks on your skin um, for some reason. So you just wanna make sure you rub it, in, rub it in really well. Now, I mean, you, you can see that on the camera how that literally has just kind of knocked that shine out, you know, which is great. So that makes it easier, you know, to apply your eyebrows and, and things like that. So one of the things that I do, since I do have these really dark marks, um, you know, on my eyes is I use the, the Black Opal Total Coverage um, Concealing Foundation, which I don't hear people talk about this a lot, but in my opinion, I think this is one of their best products. Um, this is an extreme, you know, it's a very heavy full coverage foundation. It's a really good kind of like layering product. Um, so, you know, you, you put it, you know, under, you know, whatever your normal concealer is that you use. Um, you know, you can like set it with powder and then put other things under there. But I'm, I'm like I said, this is a 10 minute job. Is that a matte primer? Yes, it, it's a mattifying primer. Um, let me go back to it so you can see it it says shine control right on the package so makeup forever actually has a whole line of primers that kind of deal with specific skin issues um but but this is probably one of the most common ones um that people tend to use and a lot of pro makeup artists actually use this one in their kit because it is very effective because i i get oily <laughs> so um so this this concealer um, usually, you know, I'll just kind of use it and just kind of put it like right where my dark marks are. Oh, no problem at all. Any questions? Like I said, feel free. You know, I love questions. So um, feel free to just pop up and ask whatever you have. So I'll plop this on really quickly, um, you know, just to kind of give me a bit of additional coverage for my dark circles, which I'm working on a skincare routine to try to kind of get them away a little bit of trial and error. I'll share that in a separate video. And then I use my tried and true ride or die concealer. Um, I feel like for a daily makeup job, it's not necessarily the time to be like trying things you're not familiar with. You want to just stick with what you know works. And so one of the top concealers probably in the country is Tarte Tape Shape. 
um, you know, for very good reason. It it has really strong coverage. It goes on dewy, but then it dries down kind of matte. Um, it doesn't really crease as much as a lot of the other concealers do. It's almost kind of foolproof to use. Um, and, I, and I always kind of like to test other concealers, but I come back to this one over and over again. So um, this is the one I like to use on a daily basis. I use Deep, which is 53N. I have a neutral undertone, so um, I usually look for complexion, like foundation, concealer, products that are neutral. So I'm not, I'm not really yellow and I'm not really red either. I'm just kind of right in the middle. So, and I need a new bottle, <laughs> which I do have a, a new package waiting for me. So, um, I just kind of like, I just goop it to town. Like I just, cause, cause this is pretty much, um, kind of like, I guess the secret you could say to my daily makeup routine. Um, I like to use a, a good amount of coverage in this part of the face, like around the eyes and the concealer. And then I do powder foundation for the rest of my face because it goes really, really quickly. So I just kind of, like I said, just goop this on and then I let this sit and kind of start to kind of blend and work into my skin um, while I'm doing other things. And the other thing is my brows. So for brows, um, like I said, I'm always testing different products, but tried and true, which is my rule for every day. I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade, which has a bit of a learning curve to it, I will admit. Um, and this is in dark brown. So if you haven't used this before, you know, you might just want to practice with it. It might take a little bit of time to get, and I think it takes anybody a little bit of time at first when they first, um, you know, use a product like this because it's easy to overdo. Um, and they actually have a brush that they make. It's called the set. This is the seven B brush. And, um, I used to, <laughs> I used to sometimes, yeah, I hate sometimes when like companies come out with products and they always have like this brush that comes out with it. But most of the reputable companies, when they come out with a brush for their product, um, is for, it's usually for a specific reason. It usually does really help to apply the product. So I've used other different eyebrow brushes and come back to this one. It really is uh, one of the best ones. So I use um, the comb side to just kind of comb my eyebrows up. And um, a really quick tip on kind of grooming your brows. If you've ever heard of Flamingo razors, which um, you know you can find like on Amazon and things like that. I'm gonna, um, when I finish this video, I'm gonna put the list of products that I use and some links to the products in the description, just to make it easier for you all who um, you know are kind of picking up tips and things like that to find products. So give me, um, it's tomorrow's Easter, <laughs> so I'm dressing little kids, it's busy. Um, so give me about a day or two um, total and I'll get that list up for you. But um, I usually use a flamingo razor, honestly, to kind of groom my brows. And I just go in the direction that my hair is growing to just kind of clean them up. And I also do above my lip because, you know, most women have hair that grows above their lip, which I do, um, you know, around my monthly cycle. So um, I don't like that look. <laughs> so I get rid of that hair and this makes it really, really easy. So I keep my brows, my brows groomed that way. So I just kind of brush up. Um, and my, my little secret to using this product is, um, so you want to dip the brush in the product. And when I opened it this morning, it wasn't as tight as it should have been. So I'm hoping it didn't dry out. You have to make sure every night that you close this, like you're not going to open it for a year because if it dries out, you just have to, <laughs> you might as well forget it and just go buy another one. So, um, so yeah, so I'm dipping my brow brush in here. And then um, you want to kind of pat off a little bit of the excess in the top, okay? Just to make sure you don't have too much on. And then what I do is, as you can see, my brows, they're, they're kind of a little, you know, they look really good in the first half, but then in the second half, it kind of starts to taper off. Like I, I kind of lose, you know, my brow hairs. So I rely on a really pigmented product to kind of get them together. So... I always start with brows with drawing a line at the bottom. I'm going to look up here. You always want to draw a line at the bottom to kind of get your base. And that did not, that did not look good at all. Because I'm not used to using all these mirrors, so please forgive me. But I'll clean it up. I'll show you how to clean it up. So you should be able to kind of like in one fell swoop, 
just kind of, you know, go over with your brows. And then I'm gonna do the, the dip again, and then I'll go on the other side. Okay, for some reason, okay. All right, I wanna make sure, the most important thing is to just make sure that your, your brows are kind of like even in the middle. Because even if you make little mistakes like along the way, if, if, they're, if they're uneven right here, that's what's most noticeable. So I'm just kind of going to go in just a little bit more. Um, and, then, and then I go, I focus on the second half. Here, let me see, I had a little bit of extra product here. And then I just kind of draw the top half. And, and on the second half, I'm literally drawing because I'm trying to get it to be a little more pigmented cause, because remember, I don't really have much of any hair there. So I'm kind of really drawing this in. Um, I'll do the same on the other side. And I said, it's okay if it's not perfect because you can kind of, I have a really quick way to clean this up. And with practice, you will get better with this. Okay, and then for this part, like where you kind of have your, your hairs like more so, more so towards your face, you want this to look just a little feathery. So I, you know, I, I dipped again, tapped it off, and then I'll kind of turn my brush um, vertically. Let me see, it's a little extra piece of hair here. So I turn my brush vertically. And then when I do that, I'm um, just kind of like mimicking brow hairs on an angle, on a diagonal as I go in. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Talking through it takes a while, but if with practice, this would go a lot faster. And again, you don't have to have it perfect because you can clean it up. All right, then I go back to the brush and I brush up, which kind of helps the product to kind of go, kind of, you know, kind of go through and look a little more normal, a little more natural. Let's see. And then I just kind of step back a little bit. So I'll draw just a couple more here. Then I got to do a little bit of cleanup work because in the beginning, I kind of went down a little bit too far here. So this is kind of one of my other, um, it's the same brush that I use when I put the black opal right here. Um, I love this brush from Morphe. It's, oops, it is the M705 brush. And so this brush um, hides a multitude of sins. <laughs> it is it is kind of like on an angle. Can you see like how it's on an angle like this? So this one has a lot of product um, kind of caked into it. But with it being on an angle like that, it's really good for brow cleanup. It's good when you kind of got to get in little tight spots kind of like this. Um, you know, anything that you have to do, if you're trying to clean up around your eyes, it's kind of good like that. So I'm going to use a little bit of my, put a little bit of my tart on my hand. And tart's still up here setting while I'm doing all this. It's still setting. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of that. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen this technique before. And we just kind of go and kind of make our little, you know, kind of clean up our area. I don't do this every day. I only do this on the days when I'm like, what did I just do? Which <laughs> you have moments like that when you're doing your, you know, everybody has those moments. You're like, no, what did I just do? So, um, and then it's really, really quick. Like I said, we're going to slow-mo here, but this, this can be really, really quick. I don't use, like I said, I'm using the same color that's under my eye because you don't want to spend a whole lot of time blending like on a day-to-day. -day. Nobody has that time. I don't have that time. Maybe you do. I don't. I got to hurry. So I like to use products that, that kind of match my, my face as much as they can. And it makes life easier for me. So I think I'll go under here one more time because this is still a little thicker than what I wanted. And here. Okay. So that looks pretty even. Yeah, this one ended up being like a lot thicker than what I kind of prefer. 
over here. Okay, so there's one more thing that I'm going to do to kind of clean it up a little bit. But, you know, you pretty much get the idea. That's that's your, your brows. Don't make yourself go crazy trying to make it look perfect because, you know, like I said, the... You're just gonna that's where you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna <laughs> mess up your time if you stay there too long. Uh, but I have one more finishing product that I'll use kind of on the back end, but we're gonna keep keep it moving for now. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to here where I have my concealer, and I've kind of really allowed it to set and to kind of dry down in my face to to kind of really up the coverage up. Something fell down there. What is that? Let me see what is that. Oh, okay. Y'all trying to embarrass me today, makeup products? <laughs> I don't know what that is on my face. We're just going to wipe it off. Um, let's see. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any comments. Okay. So what I do next is, and this is a Fenty brush. This is a 110 foundation brush, which um, honestly, I didn't really like it at first when I first used it. I didn't like this brush. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good happy Saturday morning. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Um, I didn't like this brush when I first got it, to be honest with you. I prefer to kind of apply my foundation in this motion, but um, kind of patting down is, is a nice motion too, which I've had to get used to. So I use this brush to kind of pat my concealer down and I've given it a good amount of time to kind of set. So you can see it, um, you know, really kind of setting into my skin. Like I said, Tarte is really good like that. It's called face tape and it, it literally kind of functions that way. It it has a way of just kind of, you know, really blending really nicely into the skin, um, helping it look really good too. And the primer underneath that you use, you know, really helps it kind of stick during the day too. So we're just kind of blending that in. And you can see deep is a really good match for my face. Um, and then I just kind of, any excess product that was in the middle, I just kind of work it out. Whatever's in my brush, I'm not gonna be putting on, you know, liquid foundation, I don't, I don't have time. We're, we're just doing 10 minutes here, but anything extra in the brush, I do just kind of blend it out really quickly because you don't want to have any, no harsh lines. Because when you have harsh lines that, you know, that doesn't really look good in makeup. Um, so that's why I really don't fuss too much with the liquid because, you know, you have to spend a good amount of time blending. But even with the concealer, you know, I'm just making sure that I don't have any harsh lines here. So that looks really good. I'll put like one more little dollop kind of on my extreme dark mark that I have over here. And just pat that a little bit more. Okay. And so after this, you know, this looks really good. Um, it's looking, you know, and like I said, it, it does a really good job of almost kind of setting itself. Next, I'm gonna move on to my cover effects. Um, if you follow my channel for a while, you know I'm pretty much a ride or die for the Cover FX Powder Foundation. Everyone in their makeup stash should have at least one powder foundation compact that matches their skin, you know, flawlessly so that you can, can create really quick makeup looks. Um, and you might need to have two. So this is the N90, um, and I also have the N85 because um, sometimes I'm a little lighter certain times of the year, but most of the year I match N90. And then um, again, with the concealer, you should you should at the very minimum is the Tarte Creamy Concealer or the matte one. This is the matte one. I actually just purchased the Tarte Creamy Concealer for the first time, and I'm gonna be trying it out. That was gonna be an upcoming video for me because um, I can just get so like when I love a product, I just kind of stay with it. But I heard such good things about the Creamy Concealer. I said I want to try that one too. If it's better. I want to see if it really is better. So I'm actually going to be kind of testing the two out on an upcoming, um, you know, video to kind of see, you know, how that works for me. Um, so that was a good question. I have the N90, but I think it's too dark. I want to get the N85. Here, I actually have the N85 if you want to see it. Um, give me one second, guys, because let me see. Either it's right here or it might be in my... Um, makeup closet which is the closet right behind me and it is hold on one second
So yeah, we are really in my house going through all my stuff. <laughs> I have a, this is my makeup closet, my social media filming closet, and I'll show it on another video. I have like a whole case with all of my makeup organized. So I'll open up this fresh box for you so you can see the comparison. So this is N85 versus the N90. I've been using Cover FX Concealer and that's my rider that I almost go, go. That's good. That's really good. See, that's what I'm talking about. You kind of need those products you can rely on. And that's kind of one of the funny things about the beauty industry. It moves so fast. There's so many different products that come and go. And it's fun to try out the new products, but I feel like you always kind of at first, like your home base, you always need to know what are my staples and then kind of branch out from there. So that's really good. So this is N90 and this is N85. N85, as you can see, is a little more gold and it's a little more yellow. And then the N90 um, is a little deeper with a, with a slightly more of a, you know, kind of like a neutral base to it. So they look similar, um, probably on camera. Let me see. I'll swatch it for you. I just want to make sure you kind of see it. Um, and it's so sheer when you do it like this, but um, just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea how they're, they're you can't even see the N90 because that's what of a good match it is for my skin. You can barely see it, but you can see how the N85 is lighter. So, um, so yes, this is my powder. I only wear concealer and the cover effects just works. Yep. The fun fact is when I lived in Chicago, um, you know, it's colder there. I'm in Dallas right now. So we moved from Chicago to Dallas right before the pandemic began. When I lived in Chicago, I was actually lighter for like a, a large part of the year as comparison with down here. Um, and so <laughs> if you watch my channel, like down through the years, some of my makeup suggestions have just, you know, tended towards like my summer shades because I'm like my summer shade most of the year now. Um, but no, yeah, sometimes you, you, sometimes you have to do that. So that's very smart. So, but I'm definitely in 90 and I might have to figure out something else when we get into the heat of the summer here in Dallas. So I have my N90 right here. Um, you can see um, how the Tarte did such a great job of kind of drying down on its own. As the day goes on, it will turn into a bit of a matte finish. It will look like it, it. you put powder on it, even if you choose not to powder it. And on a daily basis, I don't powder, um, you know, under my eye. I, I, for the most part, I tend to kind of just leave it like this for like a daily makeup look. I've noticed that in your videos. <laughs> I just got, you know, I it was it's the sun. It's sunny here almost every day, and I love it. Um, but it's it's super sunny here. And then in the summertime, it's very often kind of in the triple digits. Um, so it's like the sun plus the heat. And then I'm outdoors with, you know, kids a lot of times. So my kids. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's funny that you notice. Um, so, OK, so this is this is a P110. Actually, let me put this down because I've, I've bought so many different versions of this product. So here is N90 right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, this is a double-headed brush from Sephora that unfortunately they don't sell this one anymore. Um, this is, I think it was called the 201 brush. Um, I don't know why they stopped doing that. I, I'm sure probably just because of profits or something like that, unfortunately. But um, double-headed brushes are really easy because they save time. So I use this side to put on my powder and then I use this side for contouring. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a little bit of the N90 and um, tap, tap, tap. And then I'm just kind of kind of applying a little bit to my forehead, um, damping down a little bit more. I go down the sides of my face um, where I'm going to end up putting in my bronzer. I put it over there. Other side of my face. Anywhere I know I'm going to be applying product, um, that is where I put the N90. Under my chin, like I said, I'm, I'm on a weight loss journey, so my, my double chin is a bit more prominent than what it usually is. So I definitely do kind of contour under my chin each day. It's really fast to do it. Um, so that right there. And then I have a um, Real Techniques setting brush. Um, they, you know, they switch their brushes up too. Tarte Safe Shape is very matte, which I like. I have to use a lot of eye cream before it. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people do use um, a lot of eye creams to kind of kind of counteract how matte it dries down. Um, I use really emollient lotions too, so I guess I guess it, you know it's kind of similar in a way. 
um yeah i it is and that's why i kind of um got excited about trying the the creamy version <laughs> which is sitting in my makeup closet um so you'll probably be interested in that video when i play around between the two of them it'll be coming up very soon because i'm trying to make a decision on whether or not i'm going to switch out um so here we go and then i just also i'm um, just kind of powder my nose because um, again, I said my nose gets really, really oily and then I'm gonna do a quick, quick contour down my nose. Um, if you want to just take a little bit of the, the press powder foundation and just do a quick swipe under your eye. That's a, you know, I just do the quickest swipe um, because like I said, Tarte dries down very matte, at least this version of it. So I try not to go overboard with um, kind of powdering this part of my face. Also, I kind of like um, my look to look kind of dewy a little bit during the day. Kind of like a little bit of a I woke up like this type of look. <laughs> so I try not, I try to leave certain parts of my skin bare of foundation um, to kind of trick the eye into thinking that, you know, I don't have as much on as what I do. So like this part of my skin, I didn't put hardly anything, you know, like under there. I try to leave some part of my face a little bare. So now that I have the cover effects on and you know, every we're kind of rounded home base here. I have my Revolution Glow um, bronzer. Um, I tried this on a whim and this has become like my most favorite bronzer of all time. They have the most beautiful shades for women of color. Um, mine is the medium. And you can see I hit pan on it. I have another one waiting for me. So when I say I love this bronzer, I'm telling the, the absolute truth. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this contour brush, the contour side, swirl it a little bit. And then I just kind of start in my forehead and we just go really quickly, kind of, you know, over the side where your face kind of bends, where your forehead bends, that's kind of where you wanna make sure you stop the contour. Um, and then the same places I put the powder, that's kind of where I'm putting it right now. I'm putting the bronzer to just kind of warm up the sides of my face. So I'll lay it down and then just kind of blend it with the other side of my brush. Um, and then to kind of step back, you can see that kind of, you know, does a good job of matching my body. Same with the other side. I'm just kind of going around the same curves from the top of the ear um, towards the corner of my mouth, but kind of stopping where my eye is. And um, if you're new to kind of daily makeup routine, the more the more you practice this, like I said, the faster and the quicker and the easier it'll get. Um, so putting that down and then under the chin where I have <laughs> little excess fat I'm working on. All right. And that kind of just kind of helps um, to, to kind of cinch my face in and to, to kind of, you know, help it not be. I have that Real Techniques brush. I use it for highlighting and powder. It's a great brush. I have a lot of different, I have a lot of them. <laughs> it's a great brush. It, their, their brushes are really great in general because for blending, um, they're really, really great brushes to purchase that are not too expensive. So I've put the bronzer in most of my face. And then here's kind of like my little trick that I do to start to save time around my eye area um i use the bronzer actually well i i usually go over with this brush and i just kind of quickly when i'm kind of setting everything i'll just kind of wipe a little bit of the product on my lid um and then i'll take another double ended brush from sephora that they don't sell anymore but um but it's just kind of like you know kind of like a shader type of brush basically take the same bronzer and you can use bronzer for eyeshadow. You don't have to um, buy a separate eyeshadow if you don't want to. This will give you a little bit of coverage for the daytime. Um, and it'll just give you a little bit of definition. Not too overdone. Really good for a daily makeup look. And then I'll just kind of go back and forth. All right. And you can kind of see that on camera how it just gives me a look. Wow, yeah, it, it works. It, it saves money and it saves time too. So again, and when you when you first put the brush down, you want to put it kind of where you want the most impact because that's when you have the most product on the brush. And then you kind of swipe back and forth. Like if, if I slapped it down right here, then it would be a bit, the color would be a bit stronger right there. But usually when I'm doing eyes, I always first place the brush 
towards the end because it, it looks more pleasing. Yes, it's pretty. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's really easy and simple and a way to save money. So if, if you, you know, don't want to or are not able to buy a million different, you know, eyeshadow palettes, you don't have to do that. And then I'll just take a little bit and just kind of stamp it. I haven't gotten into the contour bronzer thing yet. It could be a little scary, I think, because people, well, this is just, you know, this is my channel. These are my personal makeup beliefs. But I feel like a lot of times when I see it too, I'm like, ooh, I'm not putting that on my face. I can't walk around looking like this is too much, you know, but you don't have to kind of like go real deep with it. Like people, you know, drawing triangles and squares and circles and stars on their face. And then they doing this for like, their, again, that, that's, it's, that takes a lot of time to do. Um, but even something as quickly as getting a bronzer and just kind of, you know, going where you want a little bit of depth, that can still make a difference um, in your in your photos and kind of make a difference in your daily makeup look. So I'm going to take this part now and then I'm just going to kind of stamp it a little bit. And this is just kind of like a patter brush. You know, you see these with a lot of different lines. Um, like I said, unfortunately, Sephora stopped selling these brushes um but it you know it's it's just kind of like a generic you know any type of patter brush to pat the product down and i'm using the edge just to put a little bit under my eyes so um and then i'll take this very same brush again back to bronzer and i always kind of roll the product it looks very natural thank you i don't yeah that that's kind of my daily jam i like natural <laughs> i like natural so I'll roll the brush in the product and I'm kind of shaking it in the air to get the excess off. And then kind of going from our eye where we put the same product, I'll hold the brush vertically and then I'll just kind of draw a soft line on the side of my nose. And that's a really good daily nose contour. Really simple, but it still gives me a little bit of definition because the my nose, I almost have like a negative bridge to my nose. It's completely flat, if you can kind of see. So I, I like to kind of contour my nose because it, it looks like I have a stronger bridge than what I do. So it's just a little bit of a corrective technique that I do. And then we're done with the bronzer. Um, one, of my, one of the things that I like to do to give my makeup a really nice, fresh, daily glowy look is, and you can see that this is used and loved a lot because they're a little dirty. I'm sorry, I should clean them off for camera. But I really like the Glossier Cloud Paint. If you haven't tried them, I highly suggest that you do. Um, I have Dawn, which is kind of like an orange color, and I have Storm, which is kind of like a plum color. Um, they're both really, really great shades. And I got this suggestion from um, one of my one of the makeup artists that I look up to and I've taken classes from. Um, her name is Andrea Samuels, and I'll I'll put her her information, um, you know, in the in the description too when I'm kind of summing everything up she's a she's a really successful celebrity artist she moved to LA now but she always posts really great product recommendations on her page so if you are kind of looking for like a like a really active artist who um is always giving out great recommendations she'd be a great person to follow um but she she's actually the person who kind of hipped me on to the Glossier paints, like I said, I've taken private classes from her and um, I trust her opinion. If she post, if she says she used something, I'm probably going to end up buy <laughs> buying it. <laughs> so um, I tried this product and I love it so much. Um, so the way I usually apply it, and remember, I didn't really put hardly any powder, you know, really not any powder on my cheeks because I wanted, I knew I was going to want to use kind of like this dewy um, blush on my cheeks. So I got my two fingers, right? So I'll squeeze a little bit of the product out. And I'm just going to take this little dot. Everybody see the dot? All right, and then I'll smile. I'm going to dot one dot here. And I'm going to dot one dot here. Then I'm going to take my other finger, which is clean, and then I'm just going to tap, 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 tap in a circle. Tapping in a circle. Blending it in. All right. Nice and simple blush. Sometimes I'll go in and I'll do a little bit extra. Tap, tap, tap in a circle. Tap, tap, tap. And just gives you a really, really soft glow. So I put a little bit more down. One more dot. Tap, 
tap, tap, tap in a circle, tap, tap, tap. Then over here, the tricky thing about doing this is sometimes, you know, if you're working with the product and you have like, you know, one thing on your face here and one thing on your face there it can get a little tricky with the blending. Um, but it still looks really, really nice um, kind of in the natural light. Just to kind of give like a little bit of a softness to your face. Something you can do too, um, you know, with, with kind of like liquid blushes and powder blushes to kind of help blend them into your face is, again, you can take the, the very same brush that you use to put the powder on the rest of your face and kind of do a little dot, shake it, and then just kind of apply it over. And that helps to kind of blend it, blend everything together, blend all of the products together. Okay. All right. And give me a nice, you know, kind of like soft glow for the day. Something that I do too, um, you know, on days that I want to glow like a little bit more is I have this um, sundown blush light from uh, Melt Cosmetics. When I was looking for a, um, a replacement for one of my favorite Tarte products, um, it kind of brought me to this company, not Tarte, I'm sorry. Um, Lord, I put them all the way out of my head. Becca, <laughs> I was so upset when they closed down. So um, I used this to kind of, it was blushed copper that I was trying to replace. So this is a little bit lighter than blushed copper. But again, um, that same, and Life on a Budget, you know, this same brush again. And then you can just take a little bit after I've applied everything. And then you can kind of go in for a little bit of a highlight you know, on the face, just to give you a little bit of that glow. If you like to glow, you don't have to do that though. Um, and just apply a little bit, you know, on places where you kind of want to shine a little bit. It's a little pink, but it still looks really nice. It's kind of like a, like a highlight, you know, on the face and different parts of the face. Just gives you a little bit of that glow. Just a little bit. It's, it's subtle and it's not too much, which is what we wanted. All right, and then the last thing that I do is, oh, one more tip I wanted to mention. Some of you all might be like, that's nice, but you know, I'm a traditionalist when it comes to blush and I don't wanna be doing all that, <laughs> which I totally understand. So um, one thing I wanna show you is, I um, picked up this palette last year. It is from OPV Beauty, which is a black owned beauty brand. And I believe that they're in the UK. Um, but I, I picked this up after, um, you know, like a lot of the stuff that happened over the past couple years. And I wanted to do this black owned beauty brand video that did not come to fruition. But I ended up falling in love with this palette um, from this company because there's literally something for everyone in this palette. So you could pick up this palette and be almost like, you know, any shade and find something. So if, if you didn't really like the whole cloud paint or weren't really interested in trying that, you could just put a little bit of powder on your cheeks and then you could kind of go over it with, um, you know, just a traditional blush and that would be perfectly fine. All right, but the last thing that I'm gonna do is lips. So um, I have used forever the, the NYX uh, lip pencil in brown. Um, it's, it's a really good match to my lips. It just helps me to kind of finish a little bit. All right. And then um, right now I am actually playing around with some lip products. Um, I use the Fenty lip gloss for a long time. Um, but now that I have a little baby girl, it leaves um, a lot of her lip gloss leaves a glitter on my little girl's face when I kiss her. So I'm trying to try some of the green at Sephora brand so this one is um tower 28 beauty and the color is cashew it's a real sheer uh lip color and i love neutral and natural lip colors so much nice and simple okay and that that's pretty much my look so Oh, the last thing that I do for finishing is, um, where is it at? My little bitty thing. She's hiding from me. Oh, here it is. Um, with my brows, I use, I also use the um, the ABH Anastasia Beverly Hills. And this is, I can't even read the name of the product because the, the writing is so little. I put it in the description, but it's kind of like 
one of their brown mascaras and it's in the same color and I usually just kind of go you know right at the end before I run out like when I'm finishing a lip gloss I'll just kind of go over like the front half of my brows with this product to help to separate some of the hairs and also to just kind of continue to help it look a little more natural like I didn't just kind of draw them on so much um, I keep my brows you know I try to keep them as long as I can so that I can help them look a little feathery and it helps them look a little more put together so I'm just kind of checking it out so I think I probably could have put a little more cloud paint over here but I think um, I kind of got my nice little glow going and um, this is pretty much my look so um, it it does take only about 10 minutes like I, I talked through all the steps but um, it really only takes about 10 minutes for me to kind of go through this process so um, I appreciated all of the dialogue and all the questions from all of you um, it was nice chatting with you and hopefully you learned a thing or two I'll be posting the links and the products in the description pretty soon take care everyone and enjoy your Saturday Bye.